57. How many grams of milk of magnesia, which is MgOH2 solid, and they give us the molar mass, so 58.3 grams per mole, would be suitable in 200 milliliters of water? And then they tell us the KSB is 7.1 times 10 to the negative 12th. Include the ionic reaction and the expression for KSP in your answer, okay? And then they give us KW equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, and that equals H3O plus times OH minus. Okay, cool. So we're asking for how many grams of milk of magnesia would be suitable in 200 mils, and they give us a KSP. Now remember, with any KSP always comes a balanced equation, and that's the ionic reaction they're looking for, because ionic reaction just means that you have ions or charges. And KSP equations always have charges because you're dissociating into its ions. In this case, we know that we're talking about milk of magnesia, aka MgOH2, and they told us it was a solid. So we'll start with that. MgOH2, that's the solid. This is dissociating in equilibrium because we have a K value with its two ions. And the two ions are gonna be magnesium and the hydroxide, right? OH is always a polyatomic that never breaks up. Now, there's a couple of ways to find out the charges. Mg is in group two, so that's always a plus two charge. And hydroxide is always a negative one. You could have always just taken your subscripts and criss them, you know, crisscross them back up to see what the charges were as well. Since these have charges, these are aqueous, and I'm just seeing if I need to balance. I do see that I have two hydroxides, so I need to just put a two in front of here, and now I'm good to go. Okay. Now, I'm reading the question over again, and I don't see that we have any common ions, which means that I don't have any other uh, compounds that share the Mg2 plus or the OH minus. So we're good with that. They didn't give us a pH or a POH value, so we're fine. So we're just gonna keep going. Now we're gonna say that we're gonna be saturated solution and we're just gonna find out our specific KSP equation. The general one remembers this right here. It's just equal to the concentration of the products raised to the coefficients. So in our case, the KSP would equal the two products, so you have Mg2 plus times OH minus, and we just got to raise it to the coefficients. There was a two in front of the OH, so I do have to raise that to the second. So that's what this is all about as well. So I did include the expression for the KSP, that's this. Now they did tell me that the KSP value was 7.1, times 10 to the negative 12. But they did not tell me what the concentrations of the magnesium or the hydroxide is. So now we just have to make up variables. We'll start with the magnesium. I don't know what that's going to be, so I'll label it as X. And generally, always keep it with your coefficient. Technically, there was a one in front of the magnesium, so this would be one X, but one times X is the same as just X. But for the hydroxide, when we label this as X, this two has to come with it. So it'd be two X, and these are your variables. So the magnesium is gonna be X, and the hydroxide is gonna be two X. Now let's plug it in, solve for X. 7.1 times 10 to the negative 12th equals X times two X squared. Let's work on that 2x squared. Remember, squaring just means that you have whatever's in parentheses two times. So this would be basically 2x times 2x. Work on the numbers first. Two times two is four. And then you had two x's to pick up, so this would be x squared. So this is 4x squared. So I can just erase this and say, this is the same thing as 4x squared. Pick up another x value. You have three now. So 7.1 times 10 to the negative 12 equals 4x cubed. You want to solve, so divide by each side by 4, get rid of the 4. So I'll go like that. And now we have 7.1 times 10 to the negative 12 divided by 4. 
I get 1.775 times 10 to the negative 12th, and this equals x cubed. So ultimately, we will be doing the cube root, right, on both sides. Remember that the cube root is the same thing as just raising this to the inverse number. Three, this is really three over one, so I'll just raise it to the one third. And then on both sides, you do the same thing. So this is raising it to the one third. The three cancels out here, and now you just have x equals whatever that value is. So I'm just gonna raise that to the one third. You could do the cube root. And I will say maybe 1.21 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's molarity. Now, whose molarity is it, or which one are we going to pick? Well, they wanted grams of milk of magnesia, which is just the MgOH2. And just know that even though this wasn't in the KSP, the molarity that you solve for still goes with that compound because of the mole ratio. There was only one of these, and you solved for 1x, so the molarity that you found was Mg. OH2. Now we just have to use that information to get to grams. So now I'm just going to take this, I'm going to move it to the side. Okay. So now we have a molarity, but they want grams. Well, okay. So I think of my molarity formula, right? Molarity equals moles divided by liters. And I have a molarity, that's what I just found out, 1.21 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. And if they want grams, maybe I could find my moles first. Well, let's see, do I have a liter value? Well, they did tell me that I was in 200 mils of water. So 200 mils, I could just easily convert that to liters. Milliliters to liters, you're always dividing by 1,000. So this is the same as 0 0.200 liters. And now I have that. Now remember, another way to write this formula if I want to solve for moles, moles equals molarity times liters. So I'm just going to use it that way. Moles equals 1.21 times 10 to the negative fourth times 0 0.200. Let's see what we get. Moles equals 1.21 times 10 to the negative fourth times 0.2. I get 2.42 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's moles of my milk of magnesia, which is MgOH2. Well, how do I go from moles to grams? That's easy, right? Moles to grams of MgOH2. You always multiply by the molar mass. And how nice they gave it to us. So we're just going to multiply by 58.3. I'm not going to put the unit because molar mass is always grams per mole. So that number times 58.3. And I guess we'll do, I don't know, two sig figs. Does anybody care? I don't. So 1.4. Say 1.4 times 10 to the negative third, and that's grams. And that is your final answer. And for everybody who is saying right now, Christina, wait, they gave me a KW, they gave me this. Yeah. <laughs> They're always gonna, well, not always, but a lot of the times they will give you extra information that we don't need. We didn't need that. So I didn't even pay any attention to it. So don't be scared if you have numbers that you know you don't use, especially temperature values. Generally, the temperatures, they like to input and then you don't use them. So there you go. Okay, what do you think? I really hope this is helping you out. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this great channel. Thank you so much. I just want to help. My brother and I, we just want to help as many students as we can. Um, and thank you so much for that. I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.